Hello and welcome to my birth video, Barney's birth video I should say. This is Barney and he is three weeks old today. I honestly can't believe that it's gone so, so fast, but it's been amazing. Now, if he's going to sleep in this video, I don't know. Do you ever know? So we're going to try and crack on with it and see if he, if he plays ball, hey? Let's lie you down here. So three weeks ago today, I went into labour and I'm going to tell you all about it because it was the most opposite birth to my first. I couldn't, I couldn't have written it. Um, so on the Thursday, the day before, I had the most wonderful day with Alfie. Um, I, we had just such a nice day together. He was in the best mood. So was I. We went out for a little uh, dinner date, the two of us. We had pizza, we had ice cream. And I just came home from that day. I put him to bed and I said to George, oh, I feel so emotional that his life is all going to change, you know, really soon and, and he's going to get a sibling. But I feel like we had such a good day. And so clearly some part of my body was like, okay, she's ready. Um, because that night as I was going to bed, he was kicking like crazy. And now I think back to it, that happened before Alfie was born. The night before, the kicks were just out of this world. Um, but I didn't, I didn't put two and two together at the time. So at about 5.30 in the morning, I suddenly felt this like pop and like I wet myself a tiny bit. Honestly, it was tiny. Didn't come through my pajamas or anything. But at that point in pregnancy, 39 weeks, you are going to the loo every hour in the night. So I definitely wasn't desperate for the loo. So it's a little bit odd for me to have wet myself. So I would just lay in bed thinking, oh my gosh, could, it, could this be it? I wonder, um, I didn't wake George up because nothing else had happened. So I was just lying there sort of thinking, oh my God, this could be perfect because I just had a proper night's sleep. It was a nursery day, so Alfie would be going off to nursery. It was a Friday, so then our families were gonna be free the next day. I don't know, I just started getting really excited. Then about seven o'clock, Alfie was up. I was um, going to change his nappy and getting ready for nursery and everything. And I suddenly started feeling these little cramps. I was getting Braxton Hicks, as you'll remember, from like 17 weeks. So I was really used to these coming and going feelings. But this one was a little bit different. It was like, it would stop me in my tracks and I'd have to sort of whew, like breathe through it. I wouldn't say it was a contraction, but I call it a cramp. And they were happening maybe like once every 20 minutes. So nothing very, very regular, but I was keeping a slight eye on them. Uh, but I didn't want Alfie to see that I was in any pain or anything like that. So we just carried on the morning as usual. I had breakfast with him, but in my head I was thinking, make sure we have a big breakfast because this might be it. You might need the energy. So it clearly was playing on my mind a lot. Anyway, George took him off to nursery and then I, I rang the midwife, a helpline, and just said, I'm not sure if my waters have gone. Something has come out. It's not a lot, but I'm also having some cramps. Um, and she just said, okay, well, sounds like you're doing fine, but come on in when you're ready and we can just check you over. So it was all very calm. I had a shower, washed my hair. Like I think deep down, I thought we'd be being sent home. And so I just was thinking it was gonna be an appointment rather than anything else. So George came back, he actually wrote his hand over for work just in case. I think he thought more than I did that it was it. Um, because it was three days before my due date. So in my head, I thought I was gonna be overdue like last time. So I was trying not to get my hopes up. But anyway, this we went into the hospital about 9.45, 10 o'clock, and it was very clear they were low on staff. There was a lot of people in the waiting room and I think I was just too British and polite, but I was saying, oh yeah, I've got a few cramps. But at this point, they really were ramping up and I was really having to concentrate on my breathing, but I was just, they said, can you go sit in the waiting room? And actually there was no space in the waiting room. So we sat in the corridor and I was like, yes, of course, that's fine. Um, very, very much just people pleasing as always, um, which is something I need to learn not to do so much. And, um, and whilst we were there, we were probably sitting in this corridor for about an hour and suddenly George started timing the contractions because they were really ramping up and he went to the receptionist and said just to let you know um, my wife's contractions are actually like five minutes apart now and you could hear the panic in her voice she's like oh my god 
I didn't realise she was in labour. And so a midwife just appeared out of nowhere, took me round to like an assessment bay, um, just a bed on a ward with lots of other women having various tests and things. Um, she checked my waters. She, she did an internal examination and she said, yes, that is your waters, but there's lots more to come. It will keep trickling throughout the day. Um, and the way she was talking made me think like, oh, it's going to be ages and, you know, we're far, far away from the main event. And she said, um, so you're not in active labour, which I was like, yes, I am. I am in active labour. Like, this is all really painful. She's like, you wouldn't be able to talk to me if you're in active labour. Um, you're far too compass at the moment. And um, so what we'll do is we'll keep you here for half an hour. Um, if they die down, then you can just go home and carry on at home. Uh, or if not, we can take you to the birthing centre. So literally the second she left this cubicle, things just went from naught to 100. These contractions were longer. There was far less break in between. And I was, I was lying on my back, um, raised on the bed, and I had my hands above my head holding onto the, the headboard, basically. And I was squeezing it so tight and really having to breathe through each contraction. Um, I was getting less and less calm with my breathing. I had done some hypnobirthing, so I was really trying to zone into that. But God, some of them were mega. And I remember after one saying to George, I thought I was gonna die. That's how I felt. And there was other women um, having just really routine checks on some of the other cubicles. And I basically silenced everyone because no one else in there was in labor. They didn't think I was in labor either. Anyway, the um, George went and said to them, can she have some pain relief? She's like, you know, she's really in pain. And she, the midwife came back and was like, oh my goodness, so it's really ramped up then, hasn't it? I was like, I told you, oh, hiccups. I told you I was in labor. And, um, and she wheeled in this gas and air machine, which I was thrilled about. I was like, yes, gas and air, great. But the reality was that as soon as I took one breath of it, I started gagging, I thought I was gonna be sick. So. I tried it maybe twice, three times, but I was like, no, that doesn't work. You know, I didn't have any patience at this point because I was like, this is too intense. I tried it, it doesn't work. So that was that. <laughs> um, she then said, why don't you get onto all fours on your bed um, and see if that helps, you know, helps you through the contractions. So she then left for the next contraction. I did that, I got onto my all fours. I was sort of reaching on the top of the bed. Um, and in that moment, I can't even tell you, I felt his head just drop down and me just breathing through the contraction, my body started pushing. I've, I've never felt anything like it because obviously in my last birth, I had an epidural, so I couldn't feel any of that sort of head moving down. Um, and I absolutely freaked out. I turned straight away onto my back mid contraction, which is hard enough to do anyway. Cause I was like, oh my God, oh my God, the head's coming out, the head's coming out right now. Then this lovely midwife, new midwife came around the corner and she said, hello, do you want to walk around to the birthing center with me? And I just said to her, I cannot walk. This head is about to come out. And clearly that was all she needed to know because her face just dropped. She's like, oh, okay, uh, I'm gonna get your wheelchair. So she got a wheelchair really quickly. I got in the wheelchair and she started running with me down the corridor, introducing herself, um, explaining, we're gonna go and get in the water. I think, you know, you said you wanted to try the water. The bath is being run at the moment. Uh, let's go have a baby. And she said, it says on your notes, you had a fast labor last time. And I was saying, well, I don't really know. It, it was a fast, I dilated very fast, but then it slowed right down because he got stuck and all these sorts of things. So I'm not really sure. She's like, okay. Anyway, get into this room, the bath is running, there's a student midwife and this midwife, both of them called Katie, which is easy to remember, um, and she said, right, strip down, let's get in the bath, it hadn't even finished running yet, so I got in, um, and then I said to her, so I haven't had any pain relief, um, what can I have? And she basically was like, uh, the water? Like, we don't have time, I don't think, so just get in the water, and as soon as I got in, it was really warm, it was like a jacuzzi, I felt my whole body just melt. It was amazing. George said that all the colour just came back to my face immediately. I felt like I was being hugged. Honestly, I can't really just describe the feeling. It was it was so nice. Um, so she said, okay, turn onto your all fours. So here I was leaning on the edge of the bath and George was on the outside of it. And I was actually holding his hands so tight because I didn't have anything else to help the pain. I needed something to take my pain out on, so his poor hands, honestly. I was holding them so, so, so tight and I was on my knees. 
And George asked the midwife, so should she be pushing now or does she wait? And the midwife said, her body will just do its own thing. And I remember thinking, what kind of answer is that? Should I push or shouldn't I push? And in the next contraction, I'm just breathing. I mean, not calmly, very uncalm breathing. Um, and my body was just pushing the head down. So whenever women had said to me before, oh, the pushing is really involuntary. I was thinking, what? That's crazy. It was. It, the body, honestly, I wasn't actively pushing, but I felt like my body was bringing his head down. Um, and it was intense. Oh my goodness. This is a very positive birth story, but I can't sit here and tell you, like, it was beautiful. I loved every moment. It was intense. Um, and all around the room were, were quotes saying, like, you are safe, your body can do this, da da da. And I always thought that that kind of thing was just like a bit, a bit hippie ish and whatever, but it, it really did help. I was reading them in the middle of my breaks in between contractions. Um, and it did help. The midwife wasn't doing anything. She was just sort of like, she would rub the lower part of my back a little bit and say things like, well done, you can do this. But apart from that, she wasn't doing anything. And at no point so far had anyone checked me to see how many centimeters dilated I was. But clearly they just know, I think midwives just know from how you are. So I think they just knew, ready, this is, she's go time. Um, so all of a sudden, uh, my body started pushing more and I made some of these loud like animalistic noises and I remember hearing me doing it thinking oh that's what people mean when they say your noises get like like an animal um, so a couple of them and then um, the midwife said she could see the she could see like eyes and eyebrows and then the nose and I think I must have been hallucinating at one point because I said, oh, is the head out? And she said, no. And I thought I heard her say the head was out. And so my body sort of conned me into thinking, great, I pushed the head out. She's like, no. So I was like, oh my God, okay. So she said, you know, it's coming out and in between contractions, it will go back in a bit, come out, go back in. And I didn't think anything of it until it started happening. So I pushed, I think, till his eyes were out. George had a little look over. I was like, oh my God, I can see the baby. And then the contraction stopped and his head started sucking back in. That for me actually was the worst thing because I kept thinking, no, don't go back in because then I'm gonna have to push you out again. Um, and I was trying so hard not to relax. I was trying to keep his head out. And she was like, listen, your body needs it to come back in so that it can get ready again. So. I reluctantly let it happen and oh the next contraction I was like right this is it I'm not having that happen again baby's coming out now I made the most almighty noises and pushed more than I've ever pushed anything in my whole entire life and his head came out then you have to wait for the next contraction and it felt like the longest break I'd ever had it was like hmm so I've got a head just in between my legs just chilling out and I have to wait for the next one it was that was frustrating and a bit weird. I didn't really know what to do. It felt very strange. She asked me, do you want to uh, put your hand down and feel the head? To which I was like, no, no. <laughs> I just was holding George's hands so tight. I was like, I just, no, I just need to push him out. I don't want to touch his head. It would have freaked me out, I think. Um, but George had a look at the face and was like, oh my God, I can see the face. So the next, it took actually two more contractions to push the body out, which I always thought it just comes out in the next one. It took two more contractions. Um, and then I remember it so vividly. I reached down through my legs to collect him. He came out and he was really warm and slippery and very purple. So they'd said, look, I want to warn you that babies that come out this fast and in water are gonna be quite quiet and relaxed when they come out. So don't be panicked if he doesn't make a noise. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. But of course you do panic. He didn't cry at all. In fact, he didn't cry for, for like almost 48 hours he didn't cry. He just made a few squeaks. Um, but as I was holding him, he was going pinker and they were not worried at all. You could tell there was no panic in the room, which was great. Um, so I was just holding him and then they said, so have you got a hat for him? And I had to then let them know, uh, the hospital bag is in the car. I did not think I was having a baby right now, so we don't have anything. So they sweetly had a few little knitted hats that they gave us the choice of. So George picked one, put it on his head and just sat there. What was very weird is that the umbilical cord is obviously still attached to me inside. So as I was picking him up, I could feel it sort of pulling away, which is 
bizarre. So I moved the umbilical cord out the way and could see that he was a boy. Um, George and I were so sure we were having a boy, so it, for no reason whatsoever, but we'd convinced ourselves. So it wasn't a real shock, but we felt so happy instantly. And I was a little bit worried or concerned that I would maybe have actually wanted a girl and be a bit disappointed with a boy because I've already got a boy, but none of that. I didn't feel any disappointment whatsoever. I just was like, of course we've got a boy. Of course he's a boy. Um, so just cuddled him. Then <laughs> reality hit and I was like, oh, the placenta. I've got to deliver the placenta. You just forget about that stupid part. So George took him, wrapped him, well, they wrapped him up in a towel and George then had cuddles. Well, I had to get out of the bath, which is like a few steps, holding, um, my umbilical cord, which George had cut by this point, but I was holding it. So it's in me and I'm holding it, trying to get out of the steps. It's bizarre. Um, anyway, there was like a mattress bean bag thing next to the bed. And um, I lay on there and she said, look, we can give you the injection to help it along faster. I was like, yes, please get it done. I don't want to push anymore. But she said, I've just had a look and it's, it's right there. I think you can get it out really easily. So I was like, okay. Just let's get on with it. Um, and weirdly, it didn't hurt me to push. It's like my body was in uh, refusal mode. Like, it was like, no, thank you. We've done enough pushing. I'm not doing it. So my body was going like, oh, I tried to push it out, but I felt like nothing was happening. So clearly, it, something was happening. The midwife sort of helped it out, pulled it out, and it was a really bizarre feeling when that came out. Like, all of a sudden, my body was empty. It, it just was crazy anyway she showed it to us i was fascinated to see it's huge and it opens out so she was saying this is the bit that was attached to the baby this is the bit that was attached to you and my mind was just blown like not only did i grow a baby in my tummy i also grew an organ a whole organ that kept that baby alive for nine months plus um so yeah amazing so anyway she took that away then she said now i'm going to check to see if you've had any tears and i was like oh yeah i forgot about that as well Obviously at this point, adrenaline is so high that you just don't feel the pain. You feel like elated and relieved and all these other things that I thought, oh God, maybe I've got this huge tear and I haven't even registered it yet. So she checked and actually she said, there's a tiny tear, it was a first degree tear, so just the outside, tiny tear and it doesn't need stitches, it will heal up all by itself. So I was like, oh, thank God, give me back my baby. So George then gave him to me and I cuddled him and I was just looking at his face. He had slightly darker hair than Alfie and I thought it might be because his hair was wet because he came out in the water, but no. I mean, you can see here, it's actually, or maybe not in this light, it's actually quite red. We've got a little ginger one, um, but he was so swollen when he came out. I can't, it, he looks nothing like how he looks now. He was so swollen, his eyes were just like, could hardly open. Um, and Alfie wasn't like that at all. Alfie was like 10 days older by the time he came out and he was wide-eyed and ready for partying. This one was very, very quiet and just very content for ages. And we just stared at him because he looked so different to Alfie. And I think we just assumed we'd have the exact same baby twice, especially if he was a boy. Um, and he'd be blonde and he looked the same. He looked so different. He has the same nose and lips, but the rest of him was really, really different, especially on that day. Anyway, <clears throat> so they did all the checks on him and he weighed eight pounds six so no wonder i was so uncomfortable towards the end of my pregnancy alfie weighed seven pounds three at 41 weeks so it was a really different size baby um and when we brought him out you know if i was lying him on my chest his neck was moving around loads and i was like that is what you were doing in my pelvis i knew you were having fun in there um so yeah he was a big baby so thank goodness he came a bit early and um they weighed him and they did all the tests and things and then they just left us. They left us in this birthing suite, uh, which was so different to last time. Last time I was in theatre, I was being stitched up from episiotomy, I couldn't feel my legs because I had an epidural. Um, I was being wheeled to a postnatal ward. There was like hundreds, hundreds, about 15 different doctors and medical staff around doing various things. And this time, they actually just let us be. And they came in and said, would you like a tea or coffee? And when she offered that, I thought, what has just happened? This is bizarre. It's like we just popped out for lunch. So yeah, we were left in there and we were just, just the three of us, just having such a nice time, just staring at him, 
talking about what just happened. We then um, told our families, a few of our family members were on holiday because nobody thought I was going into labour early. So we FaceTimed a few different people and it was just lovely. And actually my mum and sister had come to meet us in the hospital so they could get the car seat for Alfie out of the car so they could do the nursery pickup. But by the time they arrived at the hospital, he was already born. So let me tell you the time. So we arrived at hospital at 10-ish, 10 10.15. And he was born at 12.43. So I was only in the birthing pool for 20 minutes. The rest of the time I spent labouring in the hallway because uh, no one thought I was in labour. So it just, it happened so quickly. And as um, the midwife left the room, she said, I think I'll put that down as fast labour for next time. So we can confirm I do labour fast. So it's worth bearing in mind if we ever have a third, just really rush to the hospital. Um, so we were there in the room, I had a shower, which was just crazy because I could get up and walk, I wasn't numb this time, um, and I could feel my tummy just like a really soft, squishy cushion, which I, lo I have felt so much attachment to it because it's where he grew and where he was just like an hour before. Um, so I had a shower, got into some comfy clothes, George had gone and got the hospital bag from the car park at this stage. Mm. Um, we dressed him. And then the midwife came in and said, well, you can just go home whenever you're ready. And this was like three hours after I'd given birth. Alfie was still in nursery. This, I, my mind was just blown. I was like, really? She's like, well, you can stay if you like, but there's no, there's no reason to. You're absolutely fine. If you feel fine, you're more than welcome to go home. So we started getting ready to go home. And as we walked, <laughs> we walked out of the uh, birthing centre, we didn't even pass reception. Um, we were hold, George was holding him in the car seat and we were sort of looking around like, we're really taking him. Yeah, we're, we're not coming back. We're just going to take this baby home with us. Is that okay? Nobody checked us. So we just left and went home and we got home about 10 minutes after Alfie got back from nursery. And um, I, I said to my mum, keep him upstairs. I'll come in, I'll put Barney down and... Um, then when Alfie comes down, I'll be baby free so he can see the baby and not get upset that I'm holding him. And it worked really well that way. So he came, he came down and just was pointing at the car seat because of course we'd put the doll in the car seat for weeks before just so he could get used to it. So he was like pointing and giggling a bit nervously, like baby, baby, he didn't want to touch him. And that's fine, we didn't make him. Uh, we just were saying, yes, yeah, your baby, it's your baby. I wanted to hug Alfie more than anything. I felt so much love for him and so protective over him. I could not wait to get home and see him. I just, everybody says your heart doubles and it did like immediately. I just wanted to be with my big boy. I just wanted to give him cuddles. And of course he was more interested in the train set. We'd bought him as like the present from the baby. He was like, brilliant, see you later. So it all worked out really well. He, in the last three weeks he has really taken to him. He loves him so, so much. He cuddles him and kisses him all the time. He was quite cross with me and George um, initially, and he hated me feeding him. He hated me holding him. Uh, yeah, he did really test our patience those first two weeks. He was quite tricky, but fair enough. His whole life got flipped upside down. Um, so I get it. But in the last week, he has really been so sweet. And you can tell he he gets that this is the new normal and that, you know, Barney's here to stay. <laughs> He's not going back. And yeah, there's gonna be some more challenging times for sure, but we've definitely turned a big corner, which I'm so happy about. And my heart just melts seeing them together. It's so, so gorgeous. Um, so yeah, that is the birth story. I still think about it all the time. We were here for breakfast. We had a baby and we were here for dinner. I mean, talk about quick. So it was the most positive experience I could have asked for. Um, everything I asked the birth gods to give me, like a nursery day, um, you know, close to a weekend, a water birth, da da da, I got everything I wished for. And I know that's not always the case. It wasn't the case last time, but it just goes to show that even in the same woman carrying the same gender baby, having a similar pregnancy, the birth can be miles apart. And for anyone who had a birth that they didn't love the first time, I hope this gives you a bit of hope that actually you might get the birth you want second time. It doesn't have to follow the same story. So 
yeah, I feel incredibly lucky. This boy has been an absolute angel um, and so sleepy, my God. There he is. Um, I'm just loving it. I love having two boys. I love having two children. Um, I'm exhausted but I'm having the best time. Um, thank you so much for following this pregnancy journey along with me. I will obviously continue to update you on how we're getting on with two under two, because it's a very crazy roller coaster. Um, but I appreciate all of your support so, so much, and I will see you next time.